day, good day class, and thank you for attending your lecture. So for today's meeting, we're going to tackle your lesson 7, poikilocytosis. This would refer to the variation in shape. So during the video discussion, if you have any questions or clarifications, do not hesitate to ask them. You can type it in the chat box or you can raise your hand so I can answer. Now after this discussion, uh, we will have your quiz on the previous lesson, lesson 6, which is anisocytosis. So let's start. Your poikilocytosis. Now, when you say poikilocytosis class, this will refer to the variation in shape. So, first one would be your discocyte. Your discocyte class is the normal cell with a biconcave disc with increased surface to volume ratio. Please copy. I'll give you enough time to copy this since you have no available handouts. You have until the end of the day to submit it. All right, let's continue. That is your discussion. Another one would be your target cell. Class, your target cell are also known as codocytes or platycytes. They would appear as a Mexican hat cell or cell with bull's eye appearance. Parang ganito sila. This is the Mexican hat appearance class. This is the bull's eye appearance. Para kang may target sa gitna. Now, this is an RPC with a distinct peripheral and central zone of hemoglobin. So this would be the peripheral, the central zone of hemoglobin. Niya. You notice yung normal RPC niyo may central pallor lang. But this time, instead of having a central pallor, it would have a central area of hemoglobin. And an annular area of pallor in between. Target cells result from cells having a surface which is disproportionately large compared with their volume. Mas malaki daw class yung size kesa sa laman. So in, in general terms class, imagine a 1.5 liter of Coke containing only 500 ml Coke. So that's happened. So the, the, the size of your target cell is very large, but it isn't fully, fully containing hemoglobin. Results from having a surface which is disproportionately large to the volume. Now, they are they can be found in thalassemia. Remember, in thalassemia class, you have problems in your globin chain. 
and your doping chain would have effect on the structure, on the structure of the cell, the RBC. Another one would be your obstructive and chronic liver disease, iron deficiency anemia, hemoglobinopathy, SS, CC, DD, EE, and after splenectomy. Please copy.
All right, let's continue. If you recall a class dun sa sickle cell niya, di ba? One of the, the one of the characteristic cell that you can find will be your target cell. Any question for target cell? So this is their appearance, a Mexican hat, and they would appear as a... Okay, please, uh, please take a screenshot of this and include it in your um, doubts. You screenshot yung picture ng target cell class. targets and may bulls eye kayo sa gitna. Another one would be your so-called spiro spiroidocyte. Spiroidocyte class are thicker than normal RBC. It is the intermediate between RBC and spirocyte. So when you say RBC uh, intermediate class, this is the stage before your RBC becomes a spirocyte. So RBC, it would look like this. RBC, spiroidocyte, and then spirocyte. So when you're going to be asked in your exam, what is the stage that comes before your spirocyte? It would be your spiroidocyte. It contains higher than normal concentration of RBC, of hemoglobin. And as a small area of pallor that is usually off center. Again, your spiroidocyte, this is the stage intermediate between RBC and spirocyte. It contains higher than normal concentration of hemoglobin. It has a small area of pallor that is usually off center. So the central pallor. It doesn't have a central pallor anymore, but it's not even just a bandana side. Please copy. Then another one would be your ellipticite. 
Your ellipsoid class is also known as your ovalocyte. Now, this is a narrow oval cell with a normal central pallor. Elliptocytosis can be found in healthy individuals. They are usually found in healthy pe people, but only in less than less than ten percent of cells. They can also be seen in megaloblastic anemia. hypochromic anemias, and hereditary elliptocytosis. Now, your hereditary elliptocytosis class is an autosomal dominant disorder. Autosomal dominant disorder. So, when you say autosomal dominant class, imagine if um, see, this is the this is the father, and this is the mother. So if the father has elliptocytosis and the mother does not have, it would still be, it would still get um, herited, inherited by the son. So if only kahit isa lang yung meron, it can still be inherited. Compared to your recessive, kailangan dalawa yung meron. Again, your hereditary elliptocytosis is an autosomal dominant disorder wherein even if one, one parent has it, it can still get inherited by the child. By the child. The reason for this class is there is a um, weekend. There is a weekend structural membrane of your RPC. Of your RPC. Your RPC. Due to caused by defective association Of what composes your ano class your RBC membrane? Ano na compose sa RBC membrane yun? Sige, tingnan natin ito alala yun. What composes your RBC membrane class? Iba tatlo yun. Tatlo yung parts ng RBC membrane. So we're talking about the structural part, which is, that's the surface, the knee, and talking about the, you know, the structural. So when you say structural, you know, it's not your possibility, but it starts with the letter P as well. So it's your what? So tatlayan among those would be your protein. So, ulitin ko ko sa, your hereditary elliptocytosis is an autosomal dominant disorder caused by weakened structural membrane of your RBC due to defective association of proteins. This defective association of your proteins is known as known as Horizontal effect. Horizontal effect. Please copy.
autosomal dominant disorder wherein even one parent has it, it can still manifest in their child. It is characterized by weakened structural membrane of your RBC due to defective association of protein known as the horizontal effect. Any more questions? Question the class. If none, I'll proceed to the next slide. So this is the appearance class of your elliptos. Please take a screenshot of this picture and again add it to your handouts class. So they would appear oval in shape. A central pallor baby. So if you're going to be asked to exam you if your elliptocyte has a central pallor, it is yes. Okay, another one would be your biscuit cell. So biscuit cell class, this is a type of folded RBC. So imagine this is your imagine this is your RBC. Imagine the other half being folded. Would now look like Parangan. This is found in hemoglobin C and hemoglobin SC disease. Please copy. Hemoglobin C and hemoglobin SC. This is class review. What is the usual partner of your hemoglobin C? The socket. What type of hemoglobin? Hemoglobin C usually partners with your hemoglobin S, causing your hemoglobin S. The so biscuit cell is a folded RBC found in hemoglobin C and hemoglobin SC disease. So this is the... Take a screenshot class of this and add it into your handout. Their appearance class. Inope. So, uh, parang ganyan. so, from a normal shape, the other half would be folded, appearing like this. Any questions? Okay. Another one class would be your bronze ellipticide. So this time class, um, this is a type of elliptocyte class that possess a bipolar or central distribution of hemoglobin and is typically seen in sickle cell anemia. Please copy.
Then Brown's elliptocyte possess a bipolar or central distribution of hemoglobin. Usually, kasi ito yung elliptocyte nyo, then there would be a concentration of hemoglobin on both polar sites. And this is typically seen in sickle cell anemia. The next one would be your sickle cell. So this is characterized by a crescent-shaped cell due to abnormal aggregation of your hemoglobin S. Nasaan na yung test na ginagamit for sickle cell? What was the test for your sickle cell? Naalala nyo pa? Do you still remember the test used for your sickle cell? What is the test used for your sickle cell? Lahat ang nakaalala. It's not your chromatography. Solubility test. So, ano yung reagent, Miss, ano? Miss Calpera, ng no? solubility test mo? Saponin N. It's the other one. Search the letter D. Dithionic. Dithionite. Pati ako nalilito. <laughs> okay, so that would be the test for your sickle cell. Now again, your sickle cell would appear um, that please take a screenshot of this picture and again include it in your handouts appearance of your sickle cell class they would appear crescent shape Another one would be your spirocytes class. Now, your spirocytes class, these are microcytes, approximately 6 micrometer in diameter. More spherical than RBC. So, maliliit lang talaga sila class. Maliliit na bilog. They are characterized by a decreased surface to volume ratio. And it's usually caused from the genetic defect of the RBC membrane. They are often seen in hereditary spirocytosis, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Plus, whenever you would talk about autoimmune hemolytic anemia, what does this involve? Ano ang umaatake sa red blood cells nyo dyan? What would attack your red blood cells causing hemolytic anemia? 
No, it's not the WBC. No, it's not the enzyme. It is related to your immunolo immunology and serology. What would attack? It's not the NK cells. All right, it's your antibodies. Now, your antibodies would see, would see your RBC, would see your RBC as foreign cells, as foreign cells, thus attacking them, leading to your autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Leading a class, your autoimmune hemolytic anemia would be an autoimmune disorder wherein your own antibody would see your RBCs as foreign cells. And remember, foreign cells are always attacked by your antibody in your humoral immunity. Yes, okay. Next, we have your ABO incompatible, inca incompatible hemolytic disease of the newborn. Of the newborn. Please copy class. Please take a picture of this and include it in your handouts. The spherocytes class would look like this. Very small, smaller than normal RBCs. Let's go now to your schistocytes. Now, your schistocytes class, these are fragmented or greatly distorted RBCs. They may appear as helmet, triangular, or irregularly shaped. Now, this would happen when RBCs would lose fragments due to impact with fibrin strands. Wall of disease blood vessels and artificial surfaces in the circulation. Plus, can you give me a device, an artificial device that could be found, that could be inserted into your blood circulation? Specifically, the heart. Anong device yun? Okay, we have your so-called pacemaker. So, your pacemaker class, ilalagay yan sa puso nyo kapag slow na yung heartbeat. Now, what happens is that your RPCs would hit the pacemaker, the surface of the pacemaker, and that would cause fragmentation or damage to the RPC. Dating ko, when there is a pacemaker or an artificial surface sa circulation nyo, your RBCs could hit them, 
causing your fragmentation or damage RPC, leading to your schistocytes. Now, there are two types of schistocytes, the helmet cell and the pycnocyte. Now, your helmet cell cells class would resemble a helmet seen in hemolytic anemias, while your pycnocyte would be distorted and contracted RBC, usually seen in infantile pycnocytosis and hemolytic Please copy. found in infantile pycnocytosis and hemolytic anemia. Please take a screenshot and add it into your handouts. So this is your schistocyte. This one would be your helmet set. And this one would be your pipe no set. class. Okay, we now have your teardrop cell. This is also known as your duck row site. It resembles a teardrop a, and is a type of distorted or fragmented cell. This is often seen in my yellow fibrosis. In my yellow fibrosis class, the bone marrow is constantly producing is constantly producing abnormal 
abnormal R B C S. And one of those abnormal cells class is your tear drop cell. And we also have myeloid metaplasia. Please copy. This is the appearance of your cave job cell. So, mukata. Take a screenshot, then include it again in your handouts. Talaga siyang cave job. Luha in Tagalog. They are seen in myeloid fibrosis and myeloid metaplasia. Next, we have your stomatocytes. Now, your stomatocytes are red cells in which the central biconcave area appears sleep like, as seen in a dried film. In a wet preparation, they appear as cup shaped. This is primarily caused by primary membrane defect alcoholism or it could be also to a genetic factor present in blood smears of australian of mediterranean origin found in alcoholic cirrhosis hereditary stomatocytosis hepatobiliary disease and the so-called rh null syndrome Please copy.
They would appear like this class. Parang hulugan ng coins. Para silang hulugan ng coins. Stomatocytes. May slip like. Slip. Ang Tagalog hiwa or cut. The central part. Then another one would be your crescent bodies. So these are half moon bodies or semilunar bodies of a chromosome. Very large, very pale large bodies usually located on thin parts of the blood smear. Usually caused by loss of hemoglobin as a result of mechanical injury. May be found in malaria or hemolytic diseases. Please copy. Take a screenshot, include it in the handouts. Poikilocytosis, another one would be your crenated cells. So these are red cells with numerous projections from their surface which are evenly distributed. Usually seen in washing RBCs in hypertonic solution. That's what happens to your RBC if it is put in a hypotonic solution. They would. RBC. Yes, they would lice. Okay, they would swell. Okay, not just swell sila, lolobo. But if they are put in a hypertonic solution, they would shrink. Not just shrink sila, appearing cremated. Then you could also see them in your rhemia class. So in your rhemia class, this is caused by renal failure. Renal failure, wherein there is too much creatinine and too much BUN that are not excreted. Hindi na excrete What and what happens class to creatinine and BUN kapag hindi sila na excrete? San sila na pupunta? They will then go to where? No, 
they would now stay in the blood leading to when you say uremia class this will be characterized by increased creatinine and BUN in the blood in the blood causing cremation of red cells then we also have Please copy. after exchange transmission. So these are the appearance class of your cremated. Please take a screenshot, include it again in your handouts. They would appear with spikes. Spike. Another one would be your echinocytes, also known as your sea urchin cells or your burr cells. Now, these are small cells or cell fragments bearing spines or spicules or evenly dis that are evenly distributed on the surface of the cell. They could be caused found in uremia, bleeding peptic ulcer, carcinoma of the stomach, pyruvate kinase deficiency. Plus, pyruvate, PK, na naaalala nyo sa mga pathways ng RBC metabolism, saan siya nakikita? Naalala nyo pa ba? Okay, narikit na skirt yung So, it's your M. Den Meerhoff pathway. So your pyruvate kinase deficiency class is the most common enzyme deficiency involving M10 Meyerhoff pathway. It would result it would result to mild mild to moderate mild to moderate non spirocytic non spirocytic chronic chronic hemolytic anemia with 
splenomegaly. So when you say splenomegaly, enlarge your spleen. Ulitin ko class, your pyruvate kinase deficiency is the most common enzyme deficiency involving your m then mayor hope pathway. It would result to a mild to moderate non-spirocytic. So that would be your echinocytes, chronic hemolytic anemia with splenomegaly. Then we also have renal transplant and post splenectomy. Please copy. So, it appear ay tsura de labas. They would appear parang sea urchin. Bursals in other names. Now, another one would be your acanthocytes. Now, they are also known as your spursals. They are RBC with spiny projections of various legs and irregular spacing. Have five to ten spicules. Abnormality is due to increased ratio of your cholesterol lectin on the RBC membrane. Increased ratio or cholesterol lectin on the RBC membrane ratio. Found in liver disease, hemolytic anemia, postplenectomy, PK deficiency, and a beta lipoproteinemia. Please copy.
sa itsura nila class. Sa appearance of your nakantosites. Large yung spicules. Large yung spicules. Alright, that ends the uh, presentation. So let's have a couple of minutes break. After the break, you will start with your quiz and reporting.